welcome to Otakon 2024. I forgot to film like an intro because I was just so busy with everything, but I'm super excited because Otakon is my one year anniversary of conventions. Yeah, Otakon 2023 was my first convention ever, which is crazy because it's like so big. But since I did Otakon last year, I was super curious about how things have changed for me in the past year. Since I got new stuff, I've upgraded my display, I'm just a little more experienced with Artist Alley now. But yeah, I was super excited on how it's gonna go. I will do a comparison of my numbers and all that at the end of this video from 2023 to 2024. But a little bit about Otakon. Otakon is definitely one of the bigger anime conventions on the East Coast. This year it happened from August 2nd to August 4th. And this year for 2024, they announced that they had around 46,000 attendees, which is crazy. So it's definitely a big one. And also 2024 was their 30th anniversary. But yeah, Otakon is a convention that I've been attending since before I even started doing Artist Alley, since I am local to the area. So it's always had a little special place in my heart. So I'm super grateful to be able to be part of the Artist Alley two years in a row for this convention. But since I am local, lots of my friends are attending and are happy to be my little booth interns for the weekend. So you're gonna see a lot of them helping me out for this weekend. But essentially how I set up my booth is I build it on the ground and then lift it up onto the table because it has gotten pretty tall over the year. Because in Artist Alley, height does matter. This is always a lot easier if you have two people. I can do it by myself, but it's definitely a lot more precarious since uh, the last con I went to, it actually collapsed when I tried to do it myself and it was really embarrassing because everyone saw. I think the issue is that the connectors get loose over time as you use them. So I think I'm going to invest in these reusable zip ties to like kind of reinforce the places where the connectors are so it doesn't fall apart next time. I've done most of the setup I wanted to do for Thursday. Pretty much I just don't put like any stuff out until Friday just because I don't know what if someone robs me of my life kind of thing but here we go I got so much shit now extra shit now I have an extra table I have a big chair let's see let's see if I can fit in the window wow hello welcome to my shop It's an eight foot table now. And then this time I added these like B grade mystery charms or pins to the table space now. Well, I haven't had an eight foot table in a while, but we can get it. Yeah. Hello, we are at Otakon. This is the badge. It's like black and white in color. I am dressed as Team Rocket today. And right now it's 124. So it's been like 30 minutes since Artist Alley opened. Uh, right now I've made two sales, two stickers, but I am happy with that. We are chilling. Feel it off. Yeah. All these muscles and you can't get out of a bag. Ah, it's so cute. Uh, oh, oh, uh, shit. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, the cat's a little more slow. Uh, uh, oh, man, I don't know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, we are pretty much done for day one. Yippee! I sold so many stickers. Um, and then cat pins, of course. And then I sold out of 
one for it, so I didn't bring it out, but it was just great. And yeah, now we're gonna go after party, I guess. Yay! We're leaving. Bye. Good morning, here's the fit. We're cooking, Mama. <laughs> Today is day two um, for Otakon. So far, we're about to open in like two minutes, but so far, everything's been pretty good. It's about the same, like, money wise as last year, which is a little like, eh, we'll see how today goes. Like, in inside my heart, I was like hoping it would be like 10 times more bussin' as last year because I have so much more stuff. But I think today we'll see how that goes in reality. <laughs> um, but yeah, yesterday was good. Went around, did some shopping. Um, people recognized me from YouTube, which was like really nice. They're like, oh, I watch your vlogs. I was like, oh, people watch my vlogs. That's crazy. Yeah, yesterday was like pretty tiring because again, the Artist Alley hours goes till nine, which is like honestly the longest Artist Alley hours I've like ever experienced, right? And today also goes from 9, so it's 11 to 9, which is like kind of crazy. But that's okay, because I have help from lots of people. Yippee! But yeah, let's see how today goes. Yay! So it's been like four hours, it's 3.01. And so far, I had to send I had to send David to go back more to get more stickers and I thought it was gonna be like kind of a quick errand But by the time he came back, there was pretty much no parking within the entire vicinity of the convention center So it took him like one hour to park and like he parked like 20 minutes away from the convention center So we had to walk and it was hot and I felt really bad, but now we have more Snoopy stickers and Kocho stickers and all the stuff I was running low of which for Saturday, I was like thinking like whether or not I should send it back home to get more stickers. And I just was like, I think people are gonna buy these stickers, so I need to like have them. Um, yeah, I felt really bad about that, but I guess that's like kind of a good thing living close to home, so you can restock when you need to. But yeah, <laughs> that was a journey. Um, we still have six hours left, which is kind of crazy, but that's Otakon for you. <laughs> so day two of Otakon was definitely a lot busier than the first day. I took a lot of footage of like the hallways because my friends were watching my booth so I got to walk around a bit. It was definitely pretty crowded during peak hours. The aisles for the artist alley are pretty wide so it's not too bad but it's definitely the best when you have a helper because sometimes there would just be like a line at your booth and people are waiting to buy things and you just gotta like move fast. But I think for like crowded conventions like this, this is when height really does come into play because as you can see, it's just like crowds of people and all you can ever see is kind of the top of people's booths sometimes. So I really recommend incorporating some kind of height into your booth just to catch people's eyes. <laughs> So it is 7.21 and there's still about an hour and a half left. Again, Otakon is truly the longest con I ever go to. Um, 11 to 9 is just like so rough sometimes, but it's been good vibes. It's been fun having my friends here because this is my hometown con. So like all my friends are here. Uh, to like support me and I keep running into people I know which is nice um, but overall I'm like really tired and then I just want to go home and like eat food I because it was close to home I brought like so much stuff to be like comfortable at the convention so I brought like this tall chair whoops, to like sit in so I don't have to stand in the little hole in the booth every time I brought foldable table to like eat all my snacks and like put junk on and then because so many people I know are coming to this con 
everyone's using my <laughs> table as storage for all their stuff that they buy in Artist Alley, but that's okay. <laughs> What are your what are your thoughts so far, David, about Otakon? It's pretty cool. Lots of <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time being at Otakon, so it's my first time like seeing all the people dressing up and <laughs> interesting merch to buy. Oh uh, <laughs> your answer's so genuine. <laughs> So even though I'm always really tired after Otakon, since the hours are 11 to 9 p.m., I still want to go around and do stuff at the convention because a lot of my friends are here and some of them I don't see very often. So we went over to the game room and they actually upgraded this a lot. They had like pinball machines. I think they had even more like arcade machines than before. They moved the Itasha car show into the game room and there was a cute little Japanese fire truck. We wanted to check out the rave but it was crowded and there was a line to get in and it was just kind of like bright inside so it didn't really look like our vibe. We saw this super funny free run cosplay. I don't even know how they're seeing out of that. But the best part of getting out of Artist Alley is eating. We went to this place next to the convention center and it was actually so bomb. I got the Caribbean shrimp and grits and they were really good. I recommend this place a lot. It's called Unconventional Diner and it's like a five minute walk from the convention center. But yeah, overall really successful but tiring day. We got back home at around 12 and we got to wake up and do it all over again. Good morning, today is the last day of Otakon. Um, I thought it started at 11 today, but then yesterday when I looked at my badge, it said it starts at 10 a.m. So I had to wake up a little bit earlier, but I'm really excited. I literally put this clicker keychain on my badge and the whole like freaking con, I've just been like, <laughs> this is the best thing I have purchased so far at this convention. But people are coming in now. Hopefully today is good. Um, I remember last year for Sunday, like normally Sundays are a bit better than Fridays, but I think last year for Sunday, it was around like the same, like same amount of money. So we'll see how today goes. Hopefully it will be good. So I got to walk around Artist Alley and the Vendors Hall a bit more. As you can see, the crowds are definitely a bit lower compared to Saturday, which is expected. But it is a bit dangerous for me to leave my booth because every time I make another round around Artist Alley or the Vendors Hall, I buy something. So I'm gonna do a full haul at the end of this video. But yeah, having help to be able to leave and walk around the convention is just like such a blessing because there's so much you miss out on when you're stuck behind a booth, but that's the life I chose. The Done with Otakon. So that is a wrap on Otakon. Last year, Otakon was my best show, and this year, Otakon is still my best show. I'm really grateful that I was able to get into this artist alley two times in a row. For Otakon this year and last year, the standard tables were all lottery based, so it's really just the luck of the draw. And standard booths were lottery this year, while last year they were jury based. And unlimited booths were first come first serve. So it's hard to say what next year they're going to do, they might change it up. But going over the different table types, your standard table is your basic artist alley table. It's chosen through lottery and you have to have at least 50% original art. So if you're a majority fan artist, you shouldn't go for this table type. Your standard booths are the same deal where you have to have at least 50% original art. However, you get more space and it's more expensive. And finally, unlimited booths are first come first serve. You're allowed to have 100% fan art if you'd like. They're at the front of the hall and they're significantly more expensive. But you get a 10 by 10 space in the prime area of the convention. And even though it costs $1,100, it's worth it for a lot of artists. And some people definitely split their table with another artist as well to cut down the cost. But if you're trying to go for this table type, just like be super ready when the application comes out because it basically sold out in like 10 seconds. But this year, Otakon had the most 
attendees it's ever had. It had 46,000, which is so many. Uh, but it was the 30th anniversary, and they did have like some really big names to like bring people in. So they had Flo as their musical guest artist, and a lot of English and Japanese voice actors, which definitely brings a lot of people in because the Japanese voice actors don't come super often for a lot of American conventions. And overall, Otakon is a popular con, and it has been. It's but even with all those factors, I actually did worse than last year. I still did really well and I made a good amount of money, but it wasn't the record breaking numbers that I was thinking it was gonna be. So let's go over the numbers together. So I made a video last year going through my experiences and all that for 2023, but last year my expenses came out to 542. While this year my expenses came out to 560, so just about the same. Last year, I had to pay for the exhibitor's Wi-Fi, which was $80 per day because my phone would just not connect in the basement that is the exhibit hall. But this year, they had free Wi-Fi that connected pretty well to my iPad, so I didn't need to worry about that. But this year, I did pay for two helper badges instead of just one, so that was an added expense for this year. And they increased the standard table cost from $325 to $350. But overall, since I can commute to this convention from my house, my expenses come out to be pretty minimal. But profit-wise, this year I made around 4,600 in revenue, which came out to a total profit of around 4,000. While last year, my profit was probably around 5,000. So why do I think this happened? So there's a few things that I think came into play. First of all, location. I don't think it affected my revenue too much because actually my Location from 2023 to 2024 was actually quite similar, right dab smack in the middle of the convention center. However, as you can see from comparing the maps from 2023 to 2024, they added a lot more tables to 2024's Artist Alley. More tables normally means that the money is a bit more spread out as well, but since they did have an increase in attendees, it kind of evens out a little bit. Another thing that I didn't really consider before is that Otakon last year was my first convention ever, so this is me and Otakon's first anniversary. However, since I am local to the area, I've been doing a lot of conventions within this area. So when people came to pass by, they would say, Oh, I bought from you last year, or I bought from you from this convention or that convention. So I definitely had new stuff, but not like a ton of new stuff. So people who bought from me before didn't really want to buy anything new this year. So something I need to really work on for myself is making new products and new art. Uh, I definitely need a high ticket item. I think that would help my profits a lot because right now my most expensive products are in the 20 range. So it's kind of hard to make a lot of money when you mostly have cheaper items. So that's definitely something I need to work on. You always got to work on changing and improving. Like here's a photo of my booth from 2023. As you can see, it's pretty sparse. I don't have any of the big prints because actually back then I thought people wouldn't want to buy big prints of my art. But just some advice, just make the big prints. People want your art. But I definitely have more product now. My branding's better and the booth just looks a bit more cleaner. I'm pretty happy of how things have improved and changed. But I think reaching a new audience by going to conventions that are outside my area will help me a lot. And then also, of course, making new products. But overall, still a really successful Otakon. I can't really go wrong when my expenses are so low for being a local. It was really great meeting people who have bought from me before, or just like people that I haven't seen in a while, like lots of college friends came by. And overall, I'm just really happy that I've been able to do this for a year, to have a little one year anniversary for Otakon. I'm just super grateful for that. But of course, when you come to Otakon, you're gonna buy a lot of stuff, so here's the haul. It's halfway the hall! Yay! <laughs> Yippee! We got so much stuff. But let's start with Prince. First of all, we got this print for my bathroom. <laughs> I don't know, I just thought it was so funny. Why is it called a restroom? I'm fighting for my life in here. <laughs> And then, print. What is it? <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, don't, I just saw the Honda motor scooter. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Yippee. <laughs> and then, we got the buy two, get one free deal, of course. Always falling for that one. It's a must. It's a must. <laughs> We got this Psyduck one, and the artist like had this thing where you could like roll for a shiny, and then we got a shiny, so we got a shiny Psyduck right there. 
This one's so pretty. And this one is the Totoro one. So pretty. I've never seen Totoro, actually. That's crazy. <laughs> hey, you never seen Spirited Away. I think that's more crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> and then we got this one. Fujiwara Toki Yeah. We got so many prints from Otakon. <laughs> and then the Stardew Valley one. Woo! So pretty. And then the Grand Narukami Shrine. Grand Narukami Shrine from Genshin. This one's very pretty too. They're all so pretty. I like these a lot. And then Car shirt from, uh, from Luigi. What kind of car is this? Multiple cars. Is that A86 Miata? Check it out. Rave shirt, rave shirt. <laughs> oh yeah, some of our best purchases were these clicky keychains. This one's a Vaporeon one. You gotta do that. There we go. This one's Psyduck. Ah! We kept like fidgeting with these like the whole entire con. Anyway. <laughs> Gold jelly, yippee! Oh! <laughs> you remember where you got it from? Oh no. We don't remember where you got this from, but it's a magic carp lollipop pin. It's cute. <laughs> we got <laughs> keycap covers and eyebrow pin. Woo! So many things. I haven't even gotten to my stuff yet. <laughs> okay. My stuff. <laughs> so I got. So for my stuff, we got this pin from Fox Clover Studios and then when I went up to their booth, they said that they recognized me from YouTube. So they gave me a free sticker, which I was super grateful for. Like, look how cute this is. The little piece of the pod kind of bunny. I got these two super, ah! Two super cute pins from Blush Pout Studios. I got these cats and then Pom Pom Her and Cafe. These are so cute. Um, and then we got more clicker keychains. This one's Snorlax. I got two Snorlaxes for my friends. This from No Thoughts Club. It was like a gotcha, but like it was like a human gotcha. So it was just like someone sitting behind a machine being like, you rolled an 11, ding, ding, ding. And they were like, well, we got these two stickers. We go gym and then I'm cooking. Oh no. <laughs> I'm cooking. And we also got this cute little wristlet. It has like all these bakery cats. Very cute. And then, more things. <laughs> sticker book. This is my first sticker book, but I like saw it and I was like, wow, this one's so big. So It's got so many pages. I think this one's perfect and it's so cute. Look at the back. And then this one's from Laura illustrates. I guess like so many things from her every convention I see her at. I also got this print from her. It's a duck one. So cute. And then I got this little um like print from this one artist. Persimmons. Oh, they're persimmons with little rabbits. And it's like a lino brock print. So she like hand cuts the lino and then like stamps each color on it. So I thought that was really cool. This is so cute. Yippee! And then, lastly from the vendors hall, we got the Snoopy blind box, yay! <laughs> uh, I think I want either this one, this one, or the camping one. So let's see. So, Snoopy, Snoopy, <laughs> Snoopy! <laughs> Oh, I got the camping one!